All right, I'm going to show you guys how to have some creative alternatives. You can see on the bench here that we get a bunch of different metric O-ring kits. And listen to me on this. This is a save the day. I am a huge fan of OEM parts on this. The OEM part would come with the new seat, you know, the new needle, and the O-ring, and you wouldn't have to guess at all. If you can buy just the O-rings OEM, please do so. But let's talk about a plan B. Uh, you're working on this and you want to try and see if you can't get this thing together. Regardless, we're going to test it when we're done proving that the seat's integrity is working on this O-ring. So we don't have to worry about whether it's going to leak. But I do want to make a point that we've had a lot of success using these O-rings. This one here, uh, specifically resistance to heat, high low temperature, air, water, petroleum products, fluids, gases, kerosene. So this is nitrile. We went ahead and went into our kits and we're going to show you here a couple of uh, uh, ways that we're, we're doing this. First off, when you take the O-ring off, you want to get a pick under here and I'm doing a couple things when I take the old one off. One thing I'm trying to do is I'm trying to see how pliable it is. It, you know, like I said, we're going to replace it, but I'll show you here what's often not thought about is that these O-rings over time, this one still happens to have a round edge on it. I'm going to take another one we took off, and on this one, can you actually see how it looks square? Mm -hmm. This is not meant to be a square, you know, type seal or whatnot. Can you see all the debris and everything on there? Yeah. Let me go ahead and, you know, show you that this one's also pretty rigid. As I stretch it here, I'm curious if you'll be able to see uh, cracks in it. A lot of times when you stretch it, you'll see the, the weather uh, cracks, if you will, on it. Nope, so it's just looking dirty and square on this one, right? Yep. All right, so next thing we want to do is we want to be able to choose an O-ring that's going to drag across here but not be uh, just a son of a gun to put on. So I'm going to go ahead and lube up a couple of O-rings here we're going to try. We'll just try this one first. And, and what we're doing is we're trying to compare somewhat to the original o-ring so this is this is the one that came out of the motorcycle you can see here this is just a hair larger okay mm -hmm. just a hair but I think it's gonna be too thick but I'm gonna prove prove a point here when I put this on okay it's it's too thick can you see the edge across there it's it's too far over here okay I mean I'm, I'm sure of it so watch here I'll go to the bike and when I go here, it's gonna take a ton of effort for me to put that in. And it's, it's just gonna stress it too much. And probably what happens, the O-ring will tear as I'm trying to push that through there and then it will probably leak anyway. So there's no point in even moving forward. So I'll go ahead and I'll take this one off and then we'll know. And I can tell you right now, I poked that O-ring it's no good, so I'm going to get rid of it. It went flying. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> okay, so now we're back to the ones that we, we took off the needle and seats here. So I got a different one here. Now this looks significantly smaller, doesn't it? Yep. Okay, let's see what happens when we, uh, when we do that one. Should have moved it already. What we're looking for, a small ID one actually works really really well okay because it grips the inside really good now get close and you see how we're just barely beyond the needle valve now but we are larger mm -hmm. let's see how this one feels okay. okay it took some drag now look at here remember before how much you could kind of move it around mm -hmm. look how tight it is now wow so i'm gonna feel really confident that that size o-ring is going to be able to create a good seal tool we're gonna go ahead and use our uh, mighty vac tester here i'm gonna prove the tool has the ability to not only do you want to test your tools to see if they work you also if you ever run into a result where it gives you a bad you know, result with that testing tool, I highly recommend that you take that tool to a good known vehicle and then repeat the test. For example, multimeters, compression tests, 
leak down tools. I mean, you, before you deem anything bad, you should always verify that the tool is actually functioning as designed. Otherwise, you're just going to waste a bunch of time uh, going with the wrong diagnosis. Build pressure first, okay? Go ahead and insert it here. Let's use this example right here. Had the tool itself been leaking or at the connection where you attach the tool and not having the ability to hold pressure, that could give you a false indication that your selection of O-ring would have been incorrect. You'd be taking it back apart, redoing it again, and so on and so on, when all reality it was simply just the tool was leaking. So you really have to be careful what you're doing here. You could see we weren't holding pressure because our tool was leaking. We fixed that, went back, and the O-ring was correct. And we got no bubbles in here, so we know that our O-ring's good. As you can see here, if you've been a fan of the channel, um, I do a lot of tests that are, you know, just a step in between two parts of a skill or a repair that aren't real common, I guess you could say, right? Like they're not real heavily used. And my students will ask me, well, why do you do this? And I love that. So I'm going to answer, why would I do this? I would do this because it's really cheap insurance. I understand that if you clean the seat really good, you have the correct size O-ring, you shouldn't have to do this. But let's think about this for a second. We all buy insurance policies, right? You know, uh, if we drive nice, if we, you know, have perfect roads, if we have no one else around, theoretically, we should never get into a, a wreck, right? So then why buy the insurance policy? I mean, why not just be super careful? Because there's the unexpected, deer runs out or whatnot. My belief in mechanics is it's very similar to that same situation. No matter how perfect of a job you could do, there's just stuff that's going to go wrong. Maybe there's a little burr in the seat that you cannot see without magnification. Maybe that O-ring is just plain no good. You know, maybe you just can't tell. Maybe you nicked it when you put it on. So in, in reality, I believe these real cheap insurance policies make us really successful when we look at uh, you know, taking the time to actually do it. And let's just use this one, for example. When you use that uh, Mighty Vac to pressurize those seats, how much time does that really take? You get the tool out of the toolbox, you go use it. If you added like a minute or two minutes to the carb job, I mean, that's pretty dang reasonable. That's a pretty cheap insurance policy. I'll tell you what, if my car policies, you know, were pennies on the dollar, I'd be buying them all day long. So anyway, those are my thoughts on that. Uh, I just recommend uh, be diligent, do great work, um, create stopping points to check yourself, and you'll have that full confidence when you put that car back together and put on that vehicle. Your chances for success are going to be really, really, really be great and keep on wrenching.